Lisa. This is Matthew, my long-suffering husband, who's volunteered to be a guinea pig to help me do this today. Um, I've been racking my brains to try and work out what I can do to help with this terrible situation that we all find ourselves in. And pretty much the only thing I'm good at is nagging people on how to take care of their mouths and brush their teeth properly. And I figure that maybe helping us all to have just slightly better oral hygiene at the moment while we can't access um, our normal dental care at the moment. They are in the process of setting up some dental emergency hubs, um, but we haven't quite managed it yet as far as I can gather. So um, if you have any trouble, then ring your dentist and you will be triaged and you'll be given some advice. But I just kind of thought that the cleaner everyone can keep their teeth at the moment. And let's face it, we've all got a little bit more time on our hands. Um, so maybe, you know, all the normal excuses that I hear about being too busy are out of the window for now. So any of my patients that are watching this, then yeah, I'm not buying that one when you can, when we all get back to normal. So, um, I'm just going to demonstrate a few things and maybe you might learn something from it. If you're one of my professional friends, uh, feel free to chip in. If I've missed out anything really obvious, then I probably have. So feel free to chip in. Um, I hope it's taken with the intentions that I meant it to be. There's no product placement. These are just the things that I usually recommend and the things I've got kicking around the house to try and give some demonstrations with. So um, there's no gain for anybody. I'm just trying to help a little bit. So I hope you find it useful anyway. Here we go. So where I'm going to start is with the electric toothbrush. So I quite like these Oral-B ones with the little round head. Um, the good little bit of advice for these is to try and change the top every three months if you can and keep it on its charger every night if at all possible so just to make it a little bit easier i'm going to get matthew to pop this thing in his mouth this is from a game that we've got at, at home at the moment yeah we're that kind of family so i'll get matthew to pop that in because it'll just help me be able to demonstrate a little bit better and then if i can tip you around to me matthew a little bit so what i would say is put some toothpaste on your brush just scoop a little bit of toothpaste into your four corners before you start, just so that you'll collect that as you go past. And then the idea with the toothbrush is that you're trying to clean the gum edge predominantly with this toothbrush. So you want to try and clean around the margin of the tooth on the outside. And then if you open a little bit, the same surface on the inside, as well as the tops of the teeth. So just to give you a little demonstration. So you would put your brush in towards the back, put it on the tooth, angle it slightly, push it down towards the gum before you start, then switch on. And then basically let the toothbrush do all the work. Oh, I've got... And just move yourself along nice and slowly, making sure that you're cleaning the necks of the teeth and that you're not missing any out. So you want to just gently move it along really slowly. Try not to skip around and to clean too many different teeth at once. Try and be a little bit methodical about it, that way you, you won't miss them quite so much. And remember that because the electric toothbrush is working on its own, you can rotate this in your hand a little bit easier. You don't have to grip it and hold it like you would a normal toothbrush. You can just move it around into all the corners. Once you get back to the starting point again, you're then going to come back along and brush the top of the teeth, because that does tend to get missed when you're concentrating so much on the neck of the tooth and then come around and do it that way. And it's exactly the same on the top. You'll push up towards the gum slightly, nice and gently. And you'll probably see it better there. You can see that I'm cleaning all of the tooth, but concentrating mainly on the gum margins. Try not to press on. This brush has got a pressure sensor on it. You see that red light coming on when I press on too hard. So it's a good way of just gauging if you're applying the right pressure. And I'll speed it up now. If you open up Matthew, we'd come back along the insides and then along the tops of those teeth there. And these timers are set for two minutes. And generally speaking, I would usually recommend people perhaps do maybe even double that, four minutes or so. If you haven't got a, an electric toothbrush, you can use a, a manual toothbrush, a good old fashioned manual one. Probably um, a, a quite a small head and a medium texture brush. This one's probably a little bit small for Matthew's mouth, but it's all I had kicking around at home. So it shows you the general idea. So what you do with a manual brush is pretty much mimic the same action as you would with the electric one. You put it on the gum, just give it a little gentle push up towards the gum, and then try if you can and brush in a circular scrubbing motion. And maybe 10 quick circles on each spot before you move along and do the ones next door. So again, try and do your gum margins 
right to the back and then don't forget you've got to do your insides and then your tops of your teeth as well. So it's just about doing that same all the way around, concentrating around the gums before you do anything else. So that's the technique with the manual toothbrush. So at that point then you've cleaned the flat part of the tooth uh, on the inside and the outside but what you haven't done is clean in between your teeth. No toothbrush ever cleans in those bits. So it's really, really important to try and clean those bits out because that's where the plaque tends to get stuck, it's where things tend to go wrong. So it's a really important part of your daily routine to try and clean those bits out. So the most common popular gadget that we have for this is the TP brush. So they come in multiple sizes and you can actually buy a, a multi-pack of these, one of every size, which is quite useful if you've never used them before because you don't really know what size you're going to need and most people need more than one size, maybe two or even three sizes to go around a mouth. So the technique that you would use with these is I usually put a very gentle curve on it before I start and then what you would do is just poke it into that little space between the tooth and then just wiggle it through. I always say to wiggle it, if you start poking at it you'll tend to bend the bristles a little bit so just try and wiggle it through. And what you want is a really good snug fit. It needs to be quite difficult to do. If it goes in too easily, then it's going to leave a little bit of plaque behind. Just come to me, Matthew, a little bit. Don't forget, you do need to get all your teeth done. You need to get right to the back. It's not so easy to demonstrate that with, with these, but the back teeth are probably more important than the front teeth. So just try and wiggle it through each of them. There is a, um, a, an alternate version for a back tooth. If, if I can get you to just pop that out, Matthew. TP do a long handled version. So the sizes all correspond, you know, your red and this one is the same size as the red in that one. But the handy hint for using these is to not open your mouth too wide. So if I can just bring you this way a little bit. So don't open as wide as that. Only open about as wide as one finger. Keep your cheek as soft as you can. And then what you do is you would hook your cheek out like this, leaving lots of space in there for this brush to go in. And then you can see that you can comfortably get that into the back tooth and wiggle it through like that so that you've got the space and if I just demonstrate what not to do if I get Matthew to open wide and stretch really tight so you've got a really tight cheek at that point there's no room to get the brush in there when you do it that way so close up let everything be soft and as floppy as you can and then you will get it to go through so that's the other thing now um, another alternative is a little rubber stick these ones don't have wires and bristles they've just got like a, a, a bendy rubber will you pop that back on for me please and I think a lot of people find these a little bit more comfortable to use so they have um, the same principle you just wiggle it through like this and these are generally a little bit tapered so they're very fine at one end and they get thicker so the idea is that you would wiggle it through as far as it wants to go so that in your bigger gaps it goes through a little bit further and your smaller gaps it doesn't go through quite so far. You may find when you first start doing any of these products that you actually cause a little bit of bleeding when you first start doing this. Try not to worry too much about that. When you're not doing these things and you're not brushing your teeth and cleaning in between your teeth very well you tend to have some inflammation in your gums and inflammation will bleed very easily when it's poked and prodded about like this so keep going don't worry about it and you will find that if you start doing it enough and regularly enough and well enough you'll get that bleeding to subside so try not to let it put you off. So these are um, a TP brand as well, they come in a packet, they're called Easy Picks and there's a small and a large in these. Um, but you will find if you start looking there's loads of these kinds of products around, these are both made by Wisdoms, those ones have got a little bit of a curve on them, they're flat. These tend to not be quite so long lasting, the, the TP brushes. I've got a wire on a little bit sturdier and a little bit hardier, but the principle's the same. Basically, you're disturbing that plaque that's stuck in between your teeth. So your other option is the good old-fashioned dental floss. All right, the good old stuff that we used to have years ago is still going strong. It is quite tricky to use dental floss, but there are some things that make it a little bit easier, so I'll, I'll give you a little demo on that. So I usually say to wrap it around your middle fingers, okay, and then hold about couple of inches between your thumb and your first finger and then again if you can look this way Matthew the idea would be that you would slide it up between your teeth hook the tooth and then slide it just a little further up so that it goes and just gently cleans up towards the gum so it's not just cleaning up the side of the tooth it goes up towards the gum a little bit but you have to keep that contact you have to keep it curved against the side of the tooth 
in order to do that safely. You need to be nice and careful when you're up near the gum. So a little bit of control at this point just to get it into the loose bit. Pull it tight, slide it up, slide it up and bring it back out again. So it's all about cleaning right up and under the gum line but not damaging it and snapping it up into the gum. When you want to get to your back teeth with gentle floss then you hold your floss and make a prong over the ends of your first fingers like this and that will then help you to get the floss around the back tooth. So you can hook around the, the back of the back tooth there and floss behind there and you can floss, scoop it down, scoop it up again and by only using one finger either side of the tooth like that it stops you being you know struggling to get to your back teeth the one mistake that most people make with the floss is that they would naturally wrap it around the index finger the first finger and once it's wrapped around those fingers you kind of only got claws really to try and push it to the back so it, it just becomes really difficult to try and get it to the back so middle fingers definitely makes life a lot easier so that's a good little hint um i'll let matthew show you the next product pop that out again for us these are called gum chucks these are something that i picked up from one of the dental meetings i went to um, basically you've got a little bit of floss on some handles and uh, it's a two-handed job but you really like these don't you? Yeah. Like you uh, it took me the best part of 30 years to get him to start cleaning in between his teeth and I uh, finally found a product that he likes so they're, they're a winner. So there's one other little gadget something called a um, interspace brush you'll find these on Amazon or wherever online shopping place you might find them. These are really useful for other prob problems like maybe you've got a really crowded area that you struggle to get into, um, get around the back of your back teeth. Um, they're particularly good for wisdom teeth problems. So if you've got a, a wisdom tooth that's stuck half in, half out, they can often flare up and give you trouble. Um, so getting one of these slightly underneath the gum flap so that you can just really, really poke it underneath and give it a good clean. Follow that up with a um, teaspoon of salt, mug of hot water, make yourself a hot water salt mouthwash. Um, that works really, really well if you can nip a wisdom tooth trouble in the bud with something like that. So a good brush underneath, really get round all where the wisdom tooth's trying to come through. And then a three or four times a day gargle with a vigorous gargle. That might just stave off any problems. Cut, cut it in the in the middle there. Um, there's another product. Um, I call it a flossette. And basically, I haven't got any um, at home to show you, unfortunately. But basically, it's a little bit of floss on a handle. So... Um, you, you use the same principle really as I've showed you with the floss or with these things and use just that small amount of floss. They come um, either shaped like a Y where the floss is across the top or like a D where the floss is down the side. I think personally that the Y shaped ones are a little bit more easy, a little bit more effective. They can get right to the back with the Y shaped ones. So if they're quite useful and quite good. Um, so that's another gadget out there but unfortunately I haven't got that one to show you. Um, Moving on to toothpastes then, um, if you've got any sensitive teeth, then the sensitive toothpastes do work um, lots of times. I mean, sometimes it's a, it's a problem that's beyond the toothpaste, but for a lot of people they do work. So there's loads of different ones around. I've got a Sensodyne Repair and Protect kicking around. I've got another Sensodyne Pro Enamel um, and a, a, um, a Colgate Pro Relief as well. They all have very slightly different ingredients in them. So. Um, if the one that you first try doesn't seem to be working then just try a different one because it may be that one's going to work better for you than another one but there are two basic principles really the first is that when you're brushing with it try and leave the toothpaste on your teeth so that what I mean by that is that you'd brush your teeth then you'd spit and then you just come away so don't suck a wet brush don't gargle with anything don't rinse with anything you want that residue of toothpaste to stay on your teeth and it's going to help that toothpaste to work that message is actually the same regardless of whether you're using a sensitive toothpaste. That's the general advice with toothpaste is to try and leave it on if you can. There's all kinds of good stuff in toothpaste. If you can leave it on, you get more out of it. So if you do find that your sensitivity is still there, then what you can do is double that up a little bit by just putting a little bit on your finger and rubbing it into the bit that's hurting before you pop into bed. And that way you just get in another coating of it. If you find the one that seems to be working for you, then stick with it because they, these things tend to need keep topping up. So if you find the right one, then don't stop. Keep going with it because it'll probably creep back if you're not careful. So that's all the bits and pieces that I got out to show you and to tell you about. I think just one final note really is to try and um, limit your sugar intake if you can. I think we're all comfort eating a little bit at the moment. I know I certainly am uh, baking cakes and turned into Nigella Lawson. Um, but with teeth, what we don't want is when we're all back to normal is for everyone to be rocking up with mouthfuls of fillings that they've 
acquired in this time because they've just done nothing but eat sugar the whole time. So I think everybody knows sugar's bad for them. But the, the message with teeth is it's all about the frequency. So we all know that having too much sugar is bad for us, but with teeth, it's how many times a day you have that sugar. So if you can just do a little bit of a look around on your labels, there's a lot of hidden sugar in things that you might not necessarily think have got sugar in them. And then once you establish what has got sugar, what hasn't got sugar, just try and limit your sugar if at all possible to three times a day if you're keeping your teeth really clean looking after them really well and not having your sugar more than three times a day you'll probably be okay so just one other note if you've got any braces on going at the moment just keep wearing your retainers i know that you'll probably all be frustrated you want to get to the next stage but keep your braces clean keep wearing your retainers um and if you've got any dentures that you wear at night then then try if you can and take them out at night it's good to give your mouth a break from them just um, keep your dentures as clean as you can in the way that you've been told in the past, but um, try not to sleep in the move at all possible. Just give your gums a, a break from it all. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, it's done with the best of intentions. Um, stay safe, everyone. Cheers.